I die. Here we are, like uh, mites on a plum. And uh, the plum is this little planet, and it goes around an insignificant local star, the sun. And that star is on the, on the obscure outskirts of an ordinary galaxy, the Milky Way, which contains 400 billion other stars. And this galaxy is just one of something like 100 billion other galaxies that make up the universe. And it is now beginning to look. This universe is one of an enormous number, maybe even an infinite number, of other closed-off universes. to simply come to grips with the real universe that we really live in. And if some of our myth and some of our religion is inconsistent with it, it's time to change the myth and the religion. It's true that uh, some people are uh, disappointed that uh, the Earth has such a comparatively insignificant role in the universe. But my view is, uh, first of all, it's not our job to impose our wishes or fears on the universe. Our job is to understand what the universe is really like. And it is about how we get uh, consciousness, how we get, how we get conscious feelings. And in that book and in a couple of others that he wrote, Damasio argues that actually a human being has to have a balance between the reasoning part and the emotional part. And he shows that neurologically. Uh, the, the seat of reason, more or less, is the frontal lobes. It's the frontal, frontal area of the brain. 
the seat of, of at least in part of the emotions uh, is the, the amygdala, which are these little two things at the, at the base of our, of our brain. And what neurobiology shows is that the two are uh, very deeply interconnected. There are a lot of neurons that go from the uh, frontal lobes into the amygdala and vice versa. So there's this constant uh, feed feedback back and forth between the two areas. And we know that if that feedback is interrupted, that breaks a, a, an equilibrium and the resulting human being is anything that you really don't want to be. It's, it's a it's, it's hyper-rational person who, however, doesn't care about anything.
uh, a lot of problems in the world uh, derive from the fact that there frankly isn't enough critical thinking going around. There isn't enough use of reason and rationality in the broader sense. It would be better for human beings at large, for society at large, to use more rationality. comes in and he's got this big birthday cake. He's got this huge big birthday cake. You know, you'll look, I'm looking at it and thinking, that, God, that thing has got to be dust. I just, I said, but it, it looked good. You know, it was beautiful, this beautiful big, you know, so I thought, ah, well, I'll just, I'll just take a little, a little of the frosting here, you know, just, so I take this and then somebody comes in and says, yeah, we put uh, about 800 hits of acid in that frosting, you know, and I go, boom, oh, oh God, you know, I'm going to, oh, Jesus. hits of acid in that frosting, you know, and I go, oh, no, no, no. I didn't really enjoy playing, uh, you know, under the influence of psychedelics. Under the influence of psychedelics.
a society based on science and technology in which nobody understands anything about science and technology. This combustible mixture of ignorance and power, sooner or later, is going to blow up in our faces. I mean, who is running the science and technology in a democracy to people who know anything about it?
of the things that's absolutely clear to me when you look at the biology behavior, human behavior, is there's no free will. It's an invention when you look at the number of influences on behavior from what your brain was doing.
acceptable version of an ant. substrates. Can the human brain figure out the human mind? It's a great if it is the human brain that actually creates the human creates the human.
magic moment before we wake. Fantasy is silver and scarlet, indigo and azure, obsidian veined with gold and lapis lazuli. Reality is plywood and plastic, done up in mud brown and olive drab. Fantasy tastes of habaneros and honey, cinnamon and cloves, rare red meat and wines as sweet as summer. Reality is beans and tofu, and ashes at the end. Reality is the strip malls of Burbank, the smokestacks of Cleveland, the parking garage of Newark. Fantasy is the towers of Minas Tirith, the ancient stones of Gormenghast, the halls of Camelot. Fantasy flies on the wings of Icarus, reality on Southwest Airlines. Why do our dreams become so much smaller when they finally come true? We read fantasy to find the colors again, I think. To taste strong spices and hear the song the sirens sang. There is something old and true in fantasy that speaks to something deep within us. To the child who dreamt that one day he would hunt the forests of the night and feast beneath the hollow hills find a love to last forever, somewhere south of Oz and north of Shangri-La. They can keep their heaven. When I die, I'd sooner go to Middle Earth.